Palestine has long remained at the centre of political debate around the globe. However, despite concerted efforts, the occupation of Palestinian territories continues, and with it, the violation of the rights of the Palestinian people. In Gaza, Ramallah and Hebron in the south, and Janine and Nazareth in the north, people try to go about their daily lives, and despite their geographic and political limitations, they still manage to enjoy life and find their passion as individuals in their beautiful country. With armed military patrolling their neighbourhoods, stark reminders of the occupation are everywhere. The graffiti artist Banksy has a long history in the Palestinian territories, with a number of artworks in Bethlehem and in the Gaza Strip. He has previously stenciled a number of pieces on the wall that cuts through the West Bank, most famously an image of a peace dove wearing a bulletproof vest. In March of this year I visited the West Bank and became one of the very first visitors to stay in Banksy's new functioning art installation, the Waldorf Hotel. Taking 14 months to complete, located close to checkpoint 300 and built in secret in the Palestinian city of Bethlehem, the hotel is part artistic and political statement, part commercial enterprise. Built as a functioning business and employing local Palestinians, Banksy takes no profit from the hotel and as well as creating jobs, he is giving local artists a space to exhibit their work. Prices range from $30, including breakfast for a bunk bed in the dorms, to $965 per night for the presidential suite. Guests each put down a $1,000 deposit to ward off theft of the dozens of new Banksy works on the walls. All the available rooms face the 8 metre high wall, with marketing proudly proclaiming it as the worst view in the world. There is some debate about the role of art in the struggle against the occupation. But here, art is everything and everywhere. The colonial feel of the hotel designed, no doubt, to evoke the time of Palestine's partition and provide a counterpoint with the more modernist approach to the art. This colonial theme is embodied in dark brown leather couches and deep reds, styled like a typical English gentleman's club and intentional as the hotel opening comes 100 years after the Balfour Declaration the 1917 edict from the British government that paved the way for the creation of the State of Israel. The Waldorf Hotel articulates the Palestinian narrative through its quirky but informative exhibits. It exists both as a living art institution but also as an informative museum space that explains the turbulent history of the region. In the museum itself, open to the public and not only guests, a series of video installations explain the wall, the controls on movement, and the troubled history of the area under Israeli rule. It details how the construction of the wall began in 2002, is 810 kilometers long, 85% of which is on Palestinian land, and how it continues to be extended. The UN calls any form of racial segregation apartheid and regards it as a crime against humanity. The museum chronicles BDS, the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Movement, a global campaign attempting to increase economic and political pressure on Israel to end what it describes as violations of international law. One hundred artists have signed a letter saying that they will not perform in Israel, including Brian Eno, Richard Ashcroft and Roger Waters. Others have simply refused to play Israel following appeals from fans, including Sinead O'Connor, The Pixies, Gorillaz and Neil Young. The European Union asserts that boycotting is a protected free speech right, rejecting Israeli pressure to criminalise BDS. Israeli army artefacts also adorn the walls of the museum giving visitors an insight into both sides of the conflict. The wall has become an ever-changing artwork itself as visitors have the opportunity to paint messages of support on the cold grey concrete surface. Resistance art has become such a part of Palestinian culture, from political writing to the aspirational slogans now stenciled on the separation barrier here in Bethlehem. Next door to the hotel itself, materials are available and instructions given on how to make stencils to leave your own message on the wall outside. 
All art is a form of protest and an effective conduit of change. Artists often have to take uncomfortable stands against administrations who support or enact policies contrary to free expression. In Bethlehem, freedom of expression is encouraged on the wall dividing the city, and visitors from all over the world come to complete this small but significant act of solidarity. Parents bring their children to this place to join in this peaceful yet poignant expression of humanity's resilience in the face of oppression. The contrast back inside the hotel is sometimes overwhelming. The piano jazz entertaining the guests takes on a new and reflective tone as, yet again, Banksy successfully juxtaposes the ordinary with the extraordinary. Access to the rooms upstairs is behind a secret bookshelf that swings open to reveal a stairway eventually leading into a series of halls with a seemingly out of order elevator part of the installation itself. Accommodations range from basic to opulent. In the presidential suite a working jacuzzi is fed from a bullet riddled and leaking water tank similar to those that adorn the roofs of many Palestinian homes, while in the corner a television set supposedly showing CNN is cracked and backwards. The dorms, an altogether more modest affair at $30 per night, and using actual surplus items salvaged from Israeli military barracks. The contrast is stark. With the Waldorf Hotel, the artist has created a compelling reason for tourists to find their way to Palestine and learn about the people and the conflict. If the intention is to get people talking about the culture of divide in Palestine and Israel through art, you can't fault Banksy for starting the conversation.